Kaplan here at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in the Greek and Roman galleries. We're going to talk a little bit about Hellenistic sculpture. So Hellenistic sculptural period uh, after the classical period, more like second century BCE? That's right. Um, here we're standing before a bronze statue of Eros, uh, sleeping. The two things that I noticed right away about this, one, he's bronze. We don't see a lot of bronze. No, we don't. This is a rare surviving bronze sculpture, one of the few to survive intact from antiquity. And bronze uh, was often later melted down for other purposes. So many original Greek sculptures that were made out of bronze don't survive for that reason. So lots of reproductions in marble. Of, That's right. You know, workshops kind of churning these things out. Yes, lucky for us, uh, Roman sculptors really liked Greek bronzes and mm -hmm. copied them often in marble. Uh, later, the original bronzes were lost. I'm glad you said that because this is one of the statues that was very loved, we're told, in uh, Roman gardens. So wealthy Romans would want a copy of the sleeping arrows. Yes. So this one, I think, dates from the Roman period. So despite the fact of being a Greek Hellenistic original, um, it is listed on the nameplate as maybe from the Augustan period. So the two things that strike me, the first was that it was made of bronze, and the second is that it's a child. Yes, we haven't seen, we don't see that very, very much in earlier Greek sculpture. Classical period seems so focused on the young male, the heroic, the, the soldier or the athlete type. That's right, and we see a shift in the Hellenistic period to a kind of realism of showing real and everyday, day-to-day -day life. Um, here in this case, a sleeping child. Yes, it's Eros, but it's a child, looking very much like a child with all its kind of plumpness. <laughs> so we might imagine Eros in the classical period triumphing or, or somehow inspiring greatness. That's right. Here he's, he's dozing. He is. It's very cute. <laughs> it is, and that's not a word we would, would asso associate with uh, Classical Greek sculpture. Cute. No, if someone said, I saw some Greek sculpture, it was very cute, you would think they were crazy. That's right. So Hellenistic art gives us this moment of repose. And I, I like compositionally, too, how it's very spread out. It's not um, so, so forced in terms of its balance or symmetry as we might expect. Right, again, letting go of that idealized perfection that we see in the classical period. Um, in the Hellenistic period, if we walk uh, back in the other direction, we see that not only is there a focus on the young, but a focus on the old. That's right. Again, uh, this interest in the Hellenistic period of showing things the way they appear in real life, not always the, the per perfect, not always the ideal. So this predates Roman concern with verism, which is focused very much on ancestors, but these aren't really portraits of individuals. No, and here we see this old market woman who is not meant to represent a particular old market woman, but this type, a realistic type. Now, as cute as the, um, the sleeping arrow says, she's... Um, Maybe past her beautiful years is a polite way to yes, say it. Yes, she's, uh, she's stooped over. We see her mouth open, her toothless mouth open, her, uh, the drapery falling sort of slackly over her body. Um, she looks tired. She's tired as she's carrying the goods to the market to sell, to make her living. So like the sleeping arrows, not very heroic. That's right. Well, I mean, heroic, I guess, in a sense that we would say, here's a woman uh, doing the chores, here's a woman doing what ennobles her in daily life, but not heroic in a classical sense. Right, and not in an ideal sense. So part of a broader trend in the Hellenistic period to expand what it means to be human, old right. and young. That's right, yes, and showing all of that, showing um, even athletes, showing them stooped over and injured, uh, old women young children, the broad spectrum of humanity is of interest to Hellenistic sculptors. Now, a, another trend in Hellenistic art, we saw the sleeping arrows with the reclining figure with the arm and the leg draped off. Here, she's up on a podium, but it, she seems like she's coming at us. She does. There's a lot of movement. In the late classical and Hellenistic styles, the forms really break out of the envelope of space that has mm. kind of enclosed them previously. So we get figures reaching out or, or legs hanging off or moving movement in space that we don't see in that kind of composed and idealized uh, classical style. It suggests to me uh, a matter of time as well, that the timelessness of the classical art uh, here extends into the moment. So the idea that this is a, the posture that she has has to be resolved, right? It's a continuation of a, of a walking right. that isn't at rest. That's right. So she's actually got a little bit of a diagonal to her as she moves into our space, not a posture she could endure for a long period of time. Right. Whereas the classical figures look very much poised and very restrained, very at rest. 
Definitely. So in the Hellenistic period here, expansion of what it means to be human with the old and the young, two statues which might challenge our ideas about Greco-Roman art right. are certainly jewels that nestle into this uh, Greco-Roman courtyard. Yes.